Hey there, Dwayne Clark, episode 165. We have Derek Peterson with us to discuss what we should be focusing on for our digital marketing strategy, building credibility, all that and more coming up. Welcome to the Wealth Through Real Estate Investing Podcast, your source for real world strategies focused on creating long term wealth, cash flow, and financial freedom through real estate. Through guidance, tips, and stories of highly successful real estate investors and thought leaders, we provide you the tools to succeed and to reach the lifestyle you always wanted. And now, your host, Dwayne Clark. Hello, and welcome to the Wealth the Real Estate Investing Show. This is your host, Dwayne Clark. And today we have the founder of Adapt Media Agency. Adapt Media is a digital online marketing services company. Derek is also the host of Adapt You Podcast. Derek, thank you so much for joining us on the show. And how you doing, my friend? Doing great. Yeah, I really appreciate you taking the time. We was talking a little bit of pre-show about kind of the work that you've been doing, all of the kind of clients that you work with in the different spaces. I know all of us as uh, active and passive and business owners, we're always thinking about you know digital marketing because it's in front of our face. So it's great to have someone like you to kind of talk about what's effective, what we should be doing as business owners and investors. Uh, but before we kick things off, if for the folks who are not familiar with you, would you mind going through your background and how you got started in the industry? Yeah, absolutely. First of all, thanks for having me on the show. I really do appreciate the opportunity to talk to you and to talk to your listeners um, about digital marketing, specifically in the real estate space. Um, so my journey as far as getting into marketing, um, I, I, it was, it was sort of somewhat of a natural thing. Um, I always tell the story when I was uh, a little kid, uh, when I say little, I was 12 years old. I grabbed my neighborhood directory and realized that I had a bunch of phone numbers of all the neighbors and I want to make a little extra cash. So uh, I wanted to mow lawns. Um, so I picked up in February, I lived in New York. I picked and opened up the directory and I started calling all these people with a pitch on how I could come and mow their grass for less than what they're paying the professional for. Um, and it went gangbusters. I ended up with like 25 to 30 lawns, which was more than I can handle where I had to hire a partner. Um, bought, used my dad's lawnmower and I grew a business that, that thrived while I was in high school and early into college. Um, and to me at that point, I, my light bulb when I kind of went off and said, you know, it's, it's, it's important to understand how to get your message out. Um, so I decided to get a degree in marketing and management from Siena College in upstate New York, um, to which and that was 20 years ago. So every thing that I do now is completely irrelevant to what I learned in college because things like social media, cell phones. I mean, I was using a word processor at that point to, uh, to write my notes. I even have a computer. Um, and, uh, you know, over the years I went through the ranks in corporate America and a variety of different sales positions, uh, wearing multiple different hats and learning a lot of things, uh, all, uh, you know, about marketing, uh, opened up a medical distribution company because I sold in the medical space and found that I really enjoyed the aspects of marketing more so than running an actual business and medical distribution. So a couple of years ago, um, you know, as we get older, we get a little wiser, we start to realize that, you know, we need to align our passions and what we like to do with what we actually do for a living. So I decided to just sell the medical distribution business, open up a marketing firm and truly do what I love, which is helping other businesses, you know, promote market and sell their products. I've always been in sales. Right. And some people like sales and marketing is synonymous. Um, so as a marketing firm, it's been uh, honestly, it's been a joy to sit down with other business owners, passionate entrepreneurs and have these discussions with them about, OK, what do you do? Explain to me your product, your service. How do we get more people to the table for you? And then we use digital marketing and all the aspects of digital marketing to get those people to the table. So that's been um it's been a joy because every client's different. Every product's different. There's similarities. You know, there's things that, you know, carry over from client to client, but to be able to take that sort of white glove approach with every client and find the best way to custom tailor something to them, uh, is, is awesome. Uh, there's no boredom in this position. Um, and it's constantly changing. So that's yeah. kind of the reader's digest version of how I kind of got into marketing and it's, uh, it's been been fantastic, and that and and with that, I found myself or found us as a firm doing a lot of work in the real estate syndication space. So we work with a lot of syndicators from self storage to you know multifamily to industrial storage, 
um, and, and a variety of other, you know, real estate asset classes, we'll say. Yeah, I love that story. That backstory kind of resonated with me because I always have kind of that that niche and knack uh, early on as an entrepreneur. You get that entrepreneurial bug and then just, just nice how you just kind of kept it going and eventually found something that you like to do, which is, like I said, the marketing side of it and, you know, helping people grow their businesses. That's pretty cool. Uh, also, one thing you had mentioned regarding kind of how you started out where even I'm a kind of old school marketer where I was doing classified ads and direct mail and kind of eventually got dragged into the social media aspect. And and a lot of the business owners are kind of in that same, that same uh, um, boat as well. And then when they think of social media, they think of the personal side of it when, you know, posting cat pictures and stuff, but they don't realize the opportunity that's out there to grow their business. Uh, and that was me, um, you know, early on as well. Can you kind of talk about the importance of business owners to adapt to the modern media and that kind of not get bogged down into the fog of the personal side of it and actually utilizing it to grow their business and, and focus on their bottom line? Yeah, I would love to. And I love the fact that you use the word adapt. I think we were chatting before we started. That's a big word for you. Obviously, it's a huge word for me. Uh, it's Adapt Media Agency is the name of our firm. And I also have a podcast called Adapt You. So that word adapt is super important. I've got it all over my house. Um, and the word is so important because I'm a firm believer with when it comes to business and when it comes to life, it's not the strongest that survives, but it's the one who's able to adapt, right? That is able to change. I mean, just look at 2020, right? Those who have been able to thrive through some challenging times have been those who have been able to adapt to the situation and shift and make changes. I've had the pleasure to work with different business individuals who have been able to do that. So adaptation is huge. Um, and when you, look at, when you look at business owners and you look at the tools that are out there, you're right. You came, I think we're similar in age and come from the, the old school methodology, like the yellow pages. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you get a phone book now, I mean, it's, it's basically, it's the paperweight, right? Exactly. Um, for the most part, for some businesses, it still makes sense. But generally speaking, most people aren't flipping through a phone book to look through the number, unless you're of the older demographic and you're not familiar with the cell phones. So maybe if that's your target market, that's how, that's who you go after, right? Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, the adaptation of marketing, it's continually changing. It's always adjusting. You can't get set in your ways. So uh, there are some folks that are uh, opposed to social media. They have an issue with it. They don't like Google or they have an issue with Facebook. So they see that as like, I'm not going to do any advertising in there. I'm not going to market in there. I'm not a social media guy or a gal. And that's fine. You don't need to post pictures of your cat, like you said, to use your example. But you can use that as a tool, right? And if you view it as a tool versus a place that you need to go post personal information, mm -hmm. then it, you frame it in a different way and you can adapt your mindset to be able to understand that, okay, here's another pathway. It's another pond of opportunity where people's attention is. And with marketing, at the end of the day, it comes down to where is people's attention, right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't take much for you to walk down the street and notice that most people are walking around like this, right? Um, sometimes you get my kids' attention, they're sitting right next to me, I'll have to text them, right? Or send them a Snapchat, right? Um, I, I have to use the area in which I know I'm going to get their attention, right? So with social media, um, just as one of the examples, um, you know, we as business owners need to adapt and see that as a tool and see that as a place where attention is, and if it's the attention of where your market is, then be able to folk, you know, push um, you know, necessary copy ads, whatnot, into that space to get their attention. So, um, you know, I hear it every day. I don't do social media. My clients aren't on social media. And I'm like, no, actually they are. Um, they are on social media. It's just which platform are they? Right. Mm -hmm. um, so it's 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 a powerful, powerful tool. And yeah, people need to stop slapping up billboards and using the phone books as much because most people's attention is down in their phones. Exactly. And one big thing, uh, especially in the industry, you probably hear this a lot, uh, especially from you know real estate investors, syndicators is no like and trust where really. like they're constantly trying to you know utilize, you know, social media as a tool, you know, digital marketing as a tool to kind of get themselves out there because a lot of people who 
are starting to come up and start to look at social media, they use that kind of a way to check people out before they do business with them. Um, it's kind of sometimes the first engagement before they start doing business with them. Can you kind of comment or just kind of talk about regarding uh, ways of people can build credibility, um, build trust, um, util utilizing online and social media um, platforms? Yeah, so um, the term no like trust is actually something that's actually built into the majority of our proposals that we send to clients. And not only in the syndication space, but but any space where you're selling anything, whether you're selling a service, whether you're selling a product, whether you're selling a real estate fund, you're trying to raise $50 million for self-storage, whatever, whatever you're promoting, you're not actually selling the product, you're not selling the service, you're selling to the person, do, do you trust me, right? Do you exactly. trust me as your guide, right? Because the hero of every story, if, if the marketer does it right, is the customer. And, and we are at the company, the guide to help them get there, right? So in real estate syndication, um, we'll use that as an example. You know, the, the, the hero is, hey, I'm a successful business person or, and I have some money to invest and I want to have that passive income stream, right? And the, you know, the, the guide is you, right? The syndicator that says, hey, we know that, we understand that's what you want and we're going to try to get you there through this education and through these opportunities. So, um, you know, how do you bridge that gap from you don't know me from a hole in the wall to, hey, I'm gonna give you $50,000 of, you know, cash or qualified funds for your investment. Um, and that no like trust is, is, it's a challenge. And there's a lot of syndicators out there trying to buy for that. So the question is like, you know, how do you, how do, you do that? Mm -hmm. So, in short, there's a variety. I mean, there's a there's a myriad of different ways, but there's some fundamentals that I'll just kind of go over that I think are a big part of doing that. First of all, um, at, a, at a high level, you need to be consistent, right? And you need to be consistent in being um, out there, being in social media, being on podcasts, hosting a show like you are, uh, because you start to develop a voice, right? And the more people see you, and, and that's why consistency is important. The more touches you have of an individual through text, email, uh, website, social media, podcast, the more people become comfortable, comfortable with you and they see you as a thought leader in that space, right? Um, and you, like with a podcast, a podcast is great because you don't necessarily, as the host, need to know everything about everything. You just need to bring credible people on your show to be able to speak about it, but you'll be seen as the resource, right? You'll be viewed as this, like Dwayne is the guy uh, in the real estate space because he's continued to educate me, right? I've, I've subscribed to his show. I've continued to become comfortable. So consistency over time is important. And that's where most indicators uh, and most people from marketing perspective is they quit. I would imagine that episode one through 20 or 30, probably nobody listened to your podcast except for your friends and family, right? Because it is, you were new, nobody knew about you, but you stayed consistent. I think you say we're in episode 160 or 70 or something. Or something yeah. <laughs> so, so you've stayed very consistent clearly over time and, and your viewership has gone up over time, right? And, and that's, that's the key. There was a study done by, and, and I, may, I may butcher this a little bit. I don't know it exactly where it was from, but I believe it was from Harvard but the, I know the basics of the study. And what the study was is they took a look, they took a group of men and they sat them in a room and then they flashed images of women in front of them. It was 20 women that they flashed from just their faces. And they tried to look at their, and they had to look at these faces and they had numbers associated with them. They were all attractive women. Um, and the goal of the study was to see what would make men find women more attractive? Was it the actual, their face or was it who they saw more often? So the, uh, nearly everyone in that study picked the same person, right? Mm. Not because arguably they were the most attractive, but they had, but because that was the face they actually saw most often. They continually flashed images in front of their face and it was consistently, because they changed it. They changed the woman. It was consistently the woman that they, the, 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 the gal that they saw most often. So the point in me saying and sharing the story is when you see somebody more often over and over and over in a digital relationship, Right, because that's what this is. It's a digital relationship that we're that we're developing. That people are walking around with these phones. 
Uh, and this is where this courtship begins and you have to be consistent, right? So that's super important. So when, and, and if you can start with that, you're in great shape. Then from there, you know, the quality of your content and the quality of your process and your integrations and the way in which your website is set up and the way in which you um, integrate with that person and the way in which you uh, speak to them over time and that you continue to engage them is super important as well. Mm. Right. So we do a lot as a marketing firm in terms of making sure the website is tight as a drum because all roads lead to Rome from the perspective that, you know, all your viewers, whether they listen to you on a podcast, a, a, a blog post, a, a social media post, whatever it may be, they're all going to go back to your site where they're going to learn more about you. Right. And that's that site needs to be tight. And there's a lot of elements of that uh, that are going to be important when setting that up. And so once we get everyone around you to have that same consistent message, right, and that message is of quality and you send them back to your site so you can then engage with them, those are at a high level some of the things from a marketing perspective um, that, that a syndicator specifically needs to take into consideration. Mm -hmm. And the, the biggest way in which you can develop a trust relationship with somebody at the end of the day is you're adding value to their lives, right? So there's things that people that are listening to this right now subscribe to and listen to because they heard it or they read it and it made an impact on their lives. So they said, oh, wow, that was good. Let me, let me get a little bit more of that. For me, like Tony Robbins, I use him as an example. I listened to one thing with that guy and I was like, man, this guy, I connect with him. I like what he's saying. And now I've read every book. I've been to his events. You know what I mean? I'm one of his, you know, crazy, uh, you know, uh, followers that, that, that really like what he has to offer, but it started with him adding value to my life before mm. I started paying for stuff. Mm. Um, so, and, and that's, that's important. I think a lot of syndicators don't, and, and not just syndicated, a lot of businesses don't add enough value in the content that they deliver um, in teaching them something and improving their life to the point where they're, they're willing to take that next step in the relationship and that's buy something or give you money uh, for an investment. Mm, and I like that a lot. You definitely broke that down. That was, that was great. And as far as kind of like uh, the, you mentioned, you work with all different types of um, uh, business owners, uh, real estate investors, professionals uh, from all different walks of life. Uh, what's kind of the, the process? Um, we kind of gave the argument of, you know, definitely should be doing digital marketing, engaging with the customers, building that relationship. What's like this, the first step as far as approaching you? What, what do you ask from clients to kind of provide to you so you can kind of create their whole kind of plan? Do you do you control all of that as far as kind of creating a website? You mentioned setting up like the lead funnels and all that different stuff and all of the follow. Can you kind of take us through your services and how you are you how you're able to help uh, business owners? Yeah. So uh, when a potential client comes to the door, whether they're a, a plumber or a syndicator or a, um, you know an attorney, uh, everyone has different needs, or they think they have certain needs when they arrive at the door, right? So. Um, I'll give an example. We have a lot of people that will come to us. We get calls every day that says, Hey, I want to run ads to send customers to my website. I said, okay, let's look at your website. So I look at their website nine times out of 10. I'm like, Hey man, your website sucks, right? It's not very good. Like it needs some work. I can send all the traffic in the world to your website, but they're probably going to leave. So it's a waste of money. So what I mean by that and saying that is to say that some people will come with something in mind and what they, they need, they come with a specific need or goal, but then we try to expand them to say, well, you may want to look at it this way. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, if somebody comes to us and they have a business and they want to market it, um, we'll sit down with that individual and we'll do a thorough analysis uh, and un to try to get a better understanding of what it is that you do. Right. So in the syndicator space, okay, what is it that you do now in terms of, are you multifamily? Are you self storage? Are you industrial? Are you commercial? What are you syndicating for? Um, what is your current portfolio? Right. Um, what is your experience and when's your next fundraise and how much are you looking to raise? So I get a real good idea and understanding of, of their business, where they are today and where they want to go. Um, and, We'll do that with any type of business because if I'm promoting your product or service, Dwayne, um, 
I need, if I'm selling your stuff, I need to know what your stuff is, right? I really need to understand it inside and out uh, emphatically uh, so that, uh, and, and really understand it so that I can create the system and the engine around it that's going to bring people to the table. Mm. So once we sit down, we get a good understanding of it, we'll prepare typically a proposal based off what gaps we're trying to plug. So for some people, it's like, I have no website, I have no social media, I have nothing. Okay, we're starting from scratch. I like that client because they don't walk in with any biases and they're just like, I'm an open book, let's go for it. Some people, they have a website, that's great, but they have no social media uh, and they have no, what we'll call bottom of the funnel integrations. So if we're to take a client from ground zero, just to kind of give you an idea of all the different things that we could potentially do for a client in the syndication space, because that's your audience, is most marketing firms, um, they focus on what's called top of the funnel, right? Which is we create a website, we'll send people to your website, and then when the lead comes to you, good luck, right? Mm -hmm. That's up to you. Mm -hmm. um, and that's top of the funnel. It's just bringing people to the table. But what can we do to feed those people when they come to the table so they are continually hungry and stay at the table? That's the idea, right? So um, what we'll do with somebody just from a high level, and I'll give an example of a client that we're working with right now that they had, uh, they had nothing. So we did a full website development um, and we helped them. Uh, they had a very, uh, they had a great portfolio for multifamily syndication, real estate investing. So they had a great portfolio. So we're able to build a website that really showcased their track record, showcased some of the statistics that other individuals were interested in showcase some of the access they had to other opportunities uh, and then to eventually showcase a deal that they're trying to sell down the road. So we, we developed the actual, you know, you know, the all roads lead to Rome. We developed their digital marketplace, their online store, which is your website. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have built their social media around it. Uh, so we shot a bunch of video with them, um, edited down in brand to create a brand that's very specific to them. Um, and then we've got them on a variety of podcasts so they can speak their voice on someone else's show. Uh, and we're in the process of launching their podcast so that they, again, can do very similar to what you're doing uh, because it's an endless supply of content, right? Mm -hmm. you, this, you have full form content in a podcast, but I can, as a marketer, I can take a clip from this podcast, throw it into social media to try to attract people to my website where my podcast is housed. So the idea is we build home base, then we build all the areas where people's attention are, podcasts, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, wherever the case may be, and we bring all those roads back to their website. Mm. So once those customers come back to the website, um, then the idea is that most people will come to a website, they leave, right? It's just the reality of life. The attention span of human beings is really quick. If you can't get people's attention within three to five seconds, you've lost them, right? Um, and the, the thing is, we're never going to change human nature, so we must cater to it. So as soon as they hit that website, you have to captivate them, right? So the design needs to speak to that, but you have to give them something. So we do a lot of lead magnet development. So we'll develop a lead magnet. For those who don't know what a lead magnet is, you, you, you'll, you'll know what it is when I explain it. It's something that pops up on the screen or something that um, is within the website um, uh, scroll that is an offering, a free online course, um, you know, five secrets to investing in multifamily and being an overnight success, something that you're like, oh, mm -hmm. I need to have that. And it's mm -hmm. free. We often do that in a video series. Why? Like we're talking right now. I'm seeing your face, you're seeing my face. If this is just a phone conversation, it wouldn't be as, uh, the communication wouldn't be there as much, right? To, when you see someone's face and you humanize them, that's why we do a lot of podcasts and a lot of video mm -hmm. is because it just, it just, it builds that trust, right? To go back to no like trust, you've now seen my face, you've seen me smile, you've seen my voice inflections, like you've heard them. And now you, you, you start to go, okay, I like this guy or I don't like this guy, right? Um, and this guy knows what he's talking about, or he doesn't know what he's talking about. And so the idea is to keep them on the website and to keep them engaged through things like lead magnets and videos, and then to capture their email, right? So to get them to opt into something. So that's, we, we've now built the website. We built all, we put all the fishing lures into the ponds of attention. We pulled the fish into the boat, which is our website. 
Now we got to keep them on the boat, right? And that's where I get your email address. Now I can chase you around forever, right? I've got your email address. Mm -hmm. um, because again, most people leave. So when they're there, it's like, give me something. Mm -hmm. Now there's other ways we can remarket to them with um, using certain tools, Facebook pixel, things like that, where we can chase them around for a while. But bottom line is I got your email. Then from there, you've opted in. And that's when you go to the bottom of the funnel, Dwayne, which is, um, is, is we use tools such as HubSpot, uh, as a HubSpot certified, uh, firm, we're able to integrate HubSpot into, uh, mark into these plans where once they come in, they get drip campaigns of very automated emails, depending on how they interact with the email, they get certain text messages and certain emails. Um, so we can really start to look at behaviors of those who are coming to the website and be able to adjust our content and adjust our engagement so that uh, we can give them the best experience that keeps them captivated the longest. And then the goal is I develop a list of a lot of people that like my content. They see me as a thought leader. They know me, they like me, they trust me. So then when I send that opportunity out, it says, hey, you know, I've got 2000 units in you know, Topeka, Kansas. I'm trying to raise $25 million. I send an email and a text message to a thousand people on my list, developing a sense of urgency and getting them excited about the opportunity that's coming. Then when it hits, people jump on it. You develop that sense of urgency. It, listen, there's it's 75% full, it's 80% full, it's 90% full. Um, and then and then you fill that opportunity right away. So that is the um, at a very high level, uh, some of the ways in which we would construct something. Uh, for a client and for a customer uh, in, in terms of an entire system um, to be able to help them promote their business. Um, and uh, th there's some other stuff, but the, but, but that's that's a, a pretty good uh, overview. Yeah, I love that a lot because like I said, it's a, it's so many moving and intricate parts and you just named just like a whole bunch was then some, some of those even have 10 parts and parts of that and 10 parts of that. So, but uh, people have to realize like as um, real estate professionals, that's, you know, for you to put that together, that is a lot of work. I have like a little team that kind of puts, you know, a lot of these, these steps involved. So it's good to have, I like putting together my dream team of professionals, digital agency, you know, um, virtual assistants, different people in place so you can get these elements put together. Cause you know, like I said, that was just, just a tip of what you can possibly do. And you had mentioned all the different steps and getting them in. And us as, uh, you know, real estate folks, we should be, you know, talking to new relationships and, you know, and helping other parts of the business to build in and bringing investors and closing those deals. And a lot of times we're actually on site looking at deals and on the plane and we don't have time. And that's how some things fall apart is because you're doing everything yourself. So I'm glad that you're able to break down and that your firm actually covers all of those elements of like a full marketing system. So I really appreciate that. And, and also you gave us a, a really great example of the uh, stories working with. I understand, are, are you also give tips and stuff like this as well on your podcast? Can you tell us a little bit about what uh, people can learn from your um, podcast show as well? Yeah, so it's funny. Um, the, the podcast, uh, which is called Adapt You, is actually completely has nothing to do with marketing. It actually has uh, to do with adaptation uh, as human beings uh, in all aspects of our life. Business can be one of them, um, but it's understanding the art of change. Because again, as I mentioned in the beginning, I'm a firm believer that, you know, if you learn the art of change, you learn the ability to adapt and pivot, you're going to be, you're going to live a magnificent life because things, mm -hmm. the only constant in life is change, mm -hmm. right? So once you accept and embrace that and you understand how to change, whether it's changing your workout, changing your diet, changing uh, your relationships, changing your business, um, and you don't stay stagnant, you don't stay like those people that, you know, are just going to stick with the yellow pages and not do social media, then that's when you'll really learn to thrive. And, um, you know, so that podcast is, is about, is about that. Um, I do plan on eventually maybe here in 2021, it's not set in stone doing a podcast, it's just about marketing. Um, but, uh, but we'll say for now, I've had, uh, the honor and privilege of coming on shows like yourself to, to be able to to satiate that need of talking about marketing. 
Yeah, I actually like that a lot because uh, it, it really starts at that high level of the mindset of saying, you know, I'm going to accept the change before you can get into any of the technical stuff. Because if you're not willing to accept, you know, like you mentioned, jumping from the yellow pages to digital marketing, embracing that. And, and of course, like a year like 2020, people had to adapt to new routines, use a lot, utilizing Zoom, um, you know, doing digital and um, virtual conferences and just kind of creating that and we kind of got forced upon us all these different changes and for the people who want to kind of take their business take their life to the next level you have to you know see what the current changes are adapt to it and, and move forward and and i think that is a nice parlay into the technical stuff of you know going and hiring a consultant you know hiring that virtual assistant hiring that writer or whatever elements you need to take your business to the next level. And as we're moving to 2021, I think it's very highly important. I think it's a very timely message as well. So I appreciate you sharing that and everything ends up you know, fitting in place there. So I uh, appreciate yes. you sharing that. So um, I always have this section towards the end of the, the interview to kind of learn a little bit more about our guests. And I'm just curious mm -hmm. about your, you know, what do you do as far as kind of your typical work day? And do you have any special morning routines? Uh, I do. So, um, probably pretty obvious being a, being a Tony Robbins guy, um, the, uh, the arena of personal self-development is something that I just drink, uh, all day long, every day. Um, so in that journey, I've, uh, tried a lot of different things in terms of morning routines and, um, and, and over time I've, I've sort of developed my own, right? So for me, um, one thing that I learned about myself, my body is that I need to wake up when my body is ready to wake up. Um, I learned long ago with circadian rhythms and sleep, setting alarm clocks can actually, can actually not, it has some negative effect on waking you up in the middle of a sleep cycle to where you actually feel fully rested. And if you start to get into a routine where your circadian rhythm has you getting up, you'll, you'll just wake up consistently. I wake up the same time every day literally the same time every day and I don't use an alarm clock um, and I feel rested usually um, it's you know it's obviously there's disruptions and things that can happen that that can affect that um, but uh, I, my goal has always been to get up very early and try to so I have to go to bed early uh, in order to get up early because that that morning time is really where uh, I get the most um, most time for myself to get myself right so that I can be a better service to other people, right? So, you know, I'm a big believer in, in the connection between the mind and the body. So fitness has been something that's always been a huge part of my life. I've been a, a triathlete for many years, uh, an endurance athlete, and that's my juice. You know, that's my, that's my sort of addiction is, is, is staying, staying fit um, because I believe that our bodies are the vessels that are going to get us through life right? This is, this is what we're occupying, right? So it never made sense to me why anyone would do anything to harm the thing that's going to get you there. Like if your car is supposed to get you to work, why would you put crappy gas in it and not change the oil? And like, like it just didn't make any sense to me. That's what gets you to work, right? This is what gets me through life. Mm -hmm. The better shape I'm in both mentally and physically, the better experience I'm going to have in life. So I get up very early, uh, usually around six, six or four is usually when I wake up. Um, and then from there, I've built a gym in my basement of my house. Uh, that was a post COVID thing because gyms were closed down. I was going nuts. So we made a sound investment in the basement. It's really, it's tight down there. It is fantastic. I love it. And my commute to the gym is, you know, 25 steps downstairs. Mm -hmm. So there's no excuses. Uh, where before it's a 30 minute commute there and back. Uh, so now it's just like, it's awesome. So I usually work out, uh, you know, first thing after I stretch, um, then from there I have, uh, I usually drink black or green tea after the workout, kind of feel nice and warm. Um, I'm not a coffee drinker, just, I never like the taste. Um, from there I have breakfast. I have the same breakfast every day, which is I eat acai berries, um, mixed with blueberries, strawberries, bananas, a little bit of, uh, protein granola on the top. Um, and then from there, um, you know, I'll drink the tea with it. And I'll start to get into um, the personal self-development stuff. So I'll spend time, whether it be reading or listening to something while I'm eating. So um, I've worked out my body. Now I'm going to work out my mind. 
um, while I'm eating something that's healthy. If I do those things and I nail that, it literally dictates my day, right? Mm -hmm. If I were asleep, if I say, eh, I don't want to get up right now and I, I don't work out, I don't eat, literally my day is 50% uh, as productive of, of what it normally is if I do those things. Um, you know, so usually by 8.30 is when I try to enter the real world and I'll actually open my laptop or I'll read messages from clients and customers. I try to avoid jumping on social media or, or reading anything uh, work-related because then you get into a re reactionary state, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just reacting to stuff at that point. So I'd rather proactively do things for me, feed myself, get ready, get straight, because then, like I said, I can be uh, more service, sharper, ready to roll uh, with things like this. You know, yeah. if I didn't do that this morning, I'd probably be, you know, slipping over my words and yawning and, you know, a hot mess. So um, I got to I, I gotta do those things. And I find I can be the best version of myself uh, throughout the day. Yeah, I, I love that a lot. And like I said, that's a big part of our life as well. We have two kids and I have to make sure everything's done because they just suck all of the energy and they're like, and it's a constant battle trying to get them, you know, on a, on a regular routine schedule and things like that. But if you have to make sure that you fuel yourself first to have all that energy to focus in order to lead the team. And you had mentioned, you know, you know, your customers and clients, people that you care about, I think it's taking priority to get yourself right first is you know to make yourself a better service to everybody else it, it sometimes seems like it's uh, selfish but in a, in a way you're actually benefiting other people because you're making sure that you're on top of your game to provide the best value and you know and service to everybody else so totally love that and it's an awesome routine i know people are gonna look at a lot of kick out of that as far as kind of awesome. like um your communication with your team or other additional tools mm -hmm. that you use to make yourself uh, more productive um do you use any of those I do. Um, I'm a big uh, techie guy, uh, so I like technology that adds value in our life. Um, and our a lot of my team, when I uh, created this company, um, I wanted to uh, give the employees complete autonomy um, in their life, like I have, right? Um, and we didn't want to be married to an office that you had to go into. And had the, but as long as you were able to get the task that was done, whether you did it on whatever hours, because people work in, you know, some are more morning people, evening people, whatever. Um, so, so everyone's remote. And in order for that, and, and another reason for that is my wife and I love to travel. Um, she has a, a travel business um, that I help market. Um, and we have really enjoyed picking up and spending a week in Thailand or wherever and working from there. Um, it provides me a lot of inspiration um, and it, it's very fulfilling. So uh, so from that perspective, um, we use tools such as HubSpot, um, big fan of HubSpot. They've got some great tools and resources in order to really integrate your business. Uh, and we use monday.com, which is another uh, project management based software to have conversations with clients because HubSpot doesn't really have a great widget for that. Um, and then, you know, we use other tools such as, you know, email, text messaging, things like that. But really our engine, our horse in the stable is, is those first two that I mentioned. Um, they're tremendous resources for us uh, and really what keeps us on task, on the rails uh, and adds levels of automation to our processes that, um, we just can't keep up with as human beings. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I totally agree with that. And especially I have uh, virtual assistants in uh, different parts of the world. So having these systems and tools where everybody can, you know, especially during different time zones, get stuff mm -hmm. work done without relying or waiting on me for stuff, you know, stuff is automated as best as you can, but also, you know, it's either in folders or using Asana or, or Monday or things like that. It's like mm -hmm. definitely pivotal and, and like I said, I'm glad that you, you know, like I said, it's the same stuff I'm on and we're definitely vibing on that a lot. So um, awesome. uh, I always ended uh, the last question because you mentioned, you know, uh, you listen to uh, Tony Robbins and you see like, you have that whole morning vibe. Uh, what can you say that you're most grateful for? So many things to be grateful for, but probably the thing I'm most grateful for uh, is always, that probably takes precedence, my family. Um, so I've been blessed to have... Um, 
uh, I, I'm, I'm remarried um, and my wife, uh, Amy, um, is she, she works, the travel business is really sort of tanked during COVID. So she's completely shifted and she actually has assumed a big role here at the agency. And she's been just lights out from that perspective. And I just, I'm just kudos to her with her ability to adapt in that situation because she, this wasn't her wheelhouse. Um, but as a, but as a person, um, as a human being, I'm just so grateful for her and my three awesome, amazing daughters, um, Taylor, Alexa, and Jordan. So I've got three beautiful daughters, um, that uh i'm surprised we haven't heard them uh, like kicking my door here during this podcast i asked them to just be a little quiet for the next hour um but they are they're an absolute blessing um they really are so they provide me so much joy going seeing them go through the different stages of life um and they are a big pain in the butt too that's kids right you know what's up um they're they are but they are amazing um see them grow uh, to see them go through those different stages, I'm just I'm just thoroughly grateful, um, especially this time of year during the holidays. You know, we get a chance to slow down a little bit, exactly, uh, and spend a little extra time, and it's that that's just been awesome. Tomorrow we're doing uh, we're going doing that indoor skydiving thing um, where they you know, they shoot the air off the tube, and we're all doing that. Uh, so it's going to be uh, it's going to be fun. Just doing just doing stuff like that, spending time with them. But forever grateful for uh, for my family. Awesome. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, that's great. Like I said, especially during these times now when things are slowing down. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll make sure to have all your information in the show notes and also our newsletter um, blast us out so everyone can get in contact with you. Uh, but what's the best contact information if you mind sharing on air as well? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, our website, uh, it's easy. So we're Adapt Media Agency. So it's just www.adaptmediaagency.com. You can find us there. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, you can find us on Instagram, uh, and you can just email me personally, uh, and it's Derek, D-E-R-E-K, at adaptmediaagency.com. Shoot me an email, you got some questions, looking for a little help, we would be glad to help you, um, especially for you syndicators, because uh, we've, we've done quite a bit of work um, in that space and, and really enjoy it, because uh, I also do have a, I do invest myself in real estate, so um, you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, something that I have some familiarity with. Awesome. Derek, it was really a pleasure having you on. I really appreciate Likewise. it. Uh, great information uh, to the audience and I definitely like said everyone should reach out, um, like to so have a conversation and uh, see if it's a good fit, but Derek, uh, have a great rest of the year. Uh, look for, uh, have a nice prosperous next year and look forward to connecting with you again soon. All right. Thanks, man. Appreciate right. the time. Take care, my friend. Hey there, this is Dwayne Clark, your host of the Wealth Through Real Estate Investing Show. I want to thank you again for tuning in and hope you're enjoying this valuable content. While I got you for a quick minute, I wanted to send you an invitation to join our growing investor community. It's called the Passive Investors Club. It's a group of like-minded individuals like you who are seeking financial freedom and to build true wealth through passive investing in commercial real estate. We take a totally different approach to investing that is opposite, that is pushed by the financial advisors and what we see in the mainstream media. We like to invest in real assets that we can touch and understand and that are not subject to the wild swings of the financial markets. We don't want to be part of the herd who pursues the traditional route, leaving our financial future to Wall Street. So if you're interested in joining our group and to share in resources and opportunities, then go to PassiveInvestorsClub.com forward slash join. Joining the club is completely free and there's no obligation. And all our members receive our free Passive Investors course along with tons of resources and content. So again, PassiveInvestorsClub.com forward slash join.